What's going on, guys? Alec here from Oz Fury Gaming. Today, I'm here to talk about all the stuff that's happened this week in Star Citizen. To start us off with, we've got a Father's Day sale with a sale on the M50 Interceptor and the Razor here for the weekend only. So go pick one up if you're interested. After that as well, the new concept sale is sort of being teased, which is to be the Zion Knox, which is a space bike. Ultra-level clearance is required, guys, and here's what we think the space bike might look like in the community. Now, it's being set for the 23rd of June at $40, so be around if you want to grab one. And then we'll move on to ATV, where we had the Roberts Brothers hosting it for us. So to start us off with, we had a bit of a talk about what LA Studio's been up to. And one of the main points was that NPC voice lines, where they've got 2,800 voice lines, and they'll be managing and writing those. For Levski and all sorts of things, as we can see here, We've actually got a first-person look on the outside of Levski, and then we have a quick look on the inside to see what it's like, and just the beautiful ambience and the real mining sort of feel of the facility. After that as well, with 3.0 comes cargo. So they've been finalizing the components for cargo mechanics with storage containers. So as we can see here, they use a grid, and basically that grid is equal to set of container or crate sizes. And as we can see, as they add more and more crates, it takes up more space. Now, vehicles such as the Dragonfly or Ursa Rover for the Aquilia, for example, will take up space as well for that cargo hold. So you won't have to worry about, you know, crates uh, intersecting with those vessels or vehicles. So after there as well, they were talking about uh, entities or uh, component entities and things like that with uh, moons and planets. Basically what they've done is they've grouped uh, the moons and all the other surrounding aspects of the uh, moons into an entity. So for example, on Yella, <clears throat> it's its own entity with parts in it, components, and Grim Hex is a part of that. It's a component of it. Now onto the tech side, they were talking about how they've actually fixed up uh, well, working on assets. So basically, for example, here with a landing pad, previously they'd have to go into the game, see what was going wrong, find the bug, get out of the game, go into the editor, change the code or whatever was going wrong in the editor, save, export, go back into the game and see if it's working. Now they've devised a tool that will allow them to do it all in one hit so they can play the game and edit it all in the same program without having to export and do things like that because that can take up a lot of precious development time. After that as well, they were working on damage states for ships as we can see here. They have a much smoother transition so they can literally just say, you know, once it hits a certain health pool or you know, it's lost amount of health, it changes that state. So it's really cool to see all of that coming into play. Obviously, this is on uh, Constellation Andromeda, so expect it to be for the uh, same thing for other ships as well. It's quite pretty, in my opinion. Next up, they had the uh, integrated flight control systems. Basically, they've taken it from a step-by-step -step update from the physics engine to a batch update, so when things need to be updated, it does it in a big, well, more of a larger hit instead of taking up resources, which means more people on servers, thankfully. Now we have quantum jump here from 1.0 uh, versus 2.0. As we can see, 2.0 is a lot smoother. Uh, the sound effects will be a lot better. And also too, as you come up to your object, it's a lot smoother too. As we see with 1.0 there, we sort of jolt in as 2.0 sort of smoothly comes up to our target. From here as well, we had the Aurora being showcased. Basically it's done, it's just getting some animation and sound controls or SFX being worked on. And also, too, uh, they talked about the skins for the ship. Saying there's going to be 14 different skins. So those who love skins go nuts. Then when they had the Anvil Terrapin. It basically finished its grey box phase. It's just getting uh, animation work sort of done on it. Getting, uh, well, the geometry for the cockpit sorted as well as the habitation side. Getting that all uh, sorted out with the way it'll be sitting. And also, too, it's going to the tech guys to get all their stuff sorted for the ship. So besides all that sort of gear too, I just want to talk about how the ship surprised me. See, now it's in its you know semi-finished state. It's quite heavily armoured in what I thought it was going to be for its actual size. And also too, I'm a bit surprised by all the different moving plates and things like that. I'm curious to know, like on the back here, is that going to be where uh, the comms array or whatever that comes up that can scan as well? And that big circle on top, is that meant to be like an umbilical connection like we do with the Drake Cutlass or any of those other larger ships. Like how is that all going to work? What components are what? So that'll be very interesting to see. I'm in, like super curious about all that. So with the Anvil Terrapin coming in guys, let me know what you think it's going to be about and if you're going to pick one up, what you plan to use it for because I know it's quite a versatile vessel. Now speaking about ships too, the 
concept for the ship updates on the page has basically been finalized. It's just being built now. So that's going to be really nice to see all the up-to-date details for the ships there. Uh, and then from there too, talking about ship uh, animations and things before, this impacts frame rate and performance. So obviously with 3.0 coming in, guys, I've been working on getting the frame rate sorted out. And talking about performance too of building games, they've been working on animations and game building for NPC, so when you do scenes, like for Squadron 42, what well, used to have to 50 minutes to load in a scene, now they've reduced that by 82%, so that's quite good. Next up as well, they talked about the male and female meshes. They've worked on the male meshes, made them a lot smoother and a lot better. As we can see here, it's a lot more fluent with the way everything works. And also too, the female mesh, like I said, is being completed, uh, so that's allowing for uh, your clothing and suits to be put on. <laughs> they had a bug here where the vertex there on the eyes uh, sort of flipped because the vertexes were so close to each other, but they fixed that up, so now it's not going to look so weird when they uh, close their eyes to have a snooze. So besides the actual you know, persons, they've been working on skins or outfits. They've been working on multiple different uh, stages of outfits too. So as we can see here, they have a minor, which will be for Levski, which, and they've also got civilian clothes being worked on, which would be nice to see. Have it add a real atmosphere instead of just being player orientated or pretty dull NPCs. So we can see here too, got other armor sets for the UEE guys and a lot of other cool stuff going on. I'm curious to know too what you guys will be running with your armor wise, what you expect to uh, be pulling out of the bag, you know, if you want to be going for the, the whole pirate style or if you reckon you'll be sitting around in the good old fashioned marine armor. So after the armor, they also talked about hair. They've got multiple different types of hair coming for 3.0, so you're not going to be Mr. Old Baldy. And then also too, they talked about the skins that they have finished. So this is to be a deck crew um, uniform, which would be really nice to see. And they've also finished up the Explorer uniform for the males and the females, which we'll get a look at in a little bit. But it's really nice to see this stuff coming together. The light marine female armor's being completed too and being fully rigged, so that's nice to see. Uh, it's gonna make for those females who enjoy their characters to actually you know, have armor. And then like I said too, the female explorer armor is being sorted and rigged too. Nice and easy, I, I imagine. Not. So after that too, they talked about serialized variables. We had Clive Johnson come and talk to us. Top lad, he's in the UK studio. He explained to us what serialized variables is and how they build it. So basically using API, which is an application and programming interface, and it basically is the controls uh, for programming. So imagine that like a car, you know, use your steering wheel, turn left and right, you've got the accelerator to make the car go faster and slower and that sort of thing, but you don't actually control the car. You know, you're not doing it, you're just basically telling it what to do. And then what you try to do with that API is make it less and less of a struggle to actually uh, drive the car. So basically you just gotta sit in the destination instead of actually driving it, basically less chance of a crash. So they use that API to basically tell the game on what updates are doing what, and we have variables. So those variables can be like you know, your health, your movement, your position, your kills, all that sort of business. And that is updated from the game engine to your client, which is the gamers. Now what the game used to do was it send the whole batch of all the entities from one side to the other. This works great for games like Call of Duty or other games that don't really require a huge amount of entities. But for games like Star Citizen where there are so many different components and entities, it basically will clog up the bandwidth. So what they do is they go, okay, let's work at what parts need to be updated and we'll send that code out and that will change. Because for example, if you've got a cup of coffee or you know, just a mug sitting there that's not moving, it doesn't need to be updated until it actually moves. So that's basically in a nutshell what serialized variables are. Go watch a video if you guys want to see more. I hope you enjoyed it, and I uh, hope to catch you guys around the verse. Toodaloo.